welcome back. So last time I removed the dash, which exposed all of the wiring in the heater core. Now I've already removed a lot of the wiring. First I removed every fuse in the fuse box that didn't affect the function of the engine. Then I simply unplugged connectors one by one and started the car to ensure that it would remain running. Then I traced the wires back to the origin, cut them, and wrapped them up. Now I did run into a few connections that would kill the engine when disconnected, some of which I will bypass once I install the switch box. Since this is a fuel injected car, it has a computer and a lot of vital components that are vital to the function of the engine. If it's an older car and it's carbureted, then most of the wiring will be able to be bypassed, if not all, but I'll have to show you that on a different car. So let's get this heater core out of here. Now last year I showed you how to do it with a sledgehammer. This time I'm gonna have to show you how to do it the right way, so they say. So let's get started. Okay, now your typical heater core normally has six to eight bolts holding it in. And in most cases, the bolts are accessible from the inside of the engine compartment. But in this case, they're inside the car, two up top on each side and two at the bottom. After you remove those bolts, there's gonna be four hoses. Two of them are the water feed and return and the other two are for the air conditioning unit. Now, when you disconnect the water hoses, be prepared for a little bit of water inside your car. It's no big deal, it's no harm. So let's start with that. Okay, so I've already undone all the bolts. Now all I have to do is go into the engine compartment and discharge the AC unit. And then I'm gonna cut the hoses from the inside of the engine compartment and this unit should pull right out of here. All right, so the heat of core is out of here. Now there's only one more thing that I have to do and that's rejoin the feed and return hoses on the inside of the engine compartment. I just use a piece of 5 8 tubing and uh, join the two, rejoin the two together with the hose clamps. Now sometimes when you remove the heater core there's a huge hole left behind and you've got to cover that up. Piece of sheet metal, big piece of rubber, anything that will prevent flames coming inside if you catch fire. Now that's something you must do. Fire is really nothing to mess around with. Don't ever go into the derby thinking you won't catch fire. And if you catch fire and you've got this big gaping hole here, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. No joke, really, cover that hole up. But on this car, I don't have to worry about that. There's no big hole there, and uh, we're moving on. So real quick, before we go, I'm gonna show you how to remove the remaining windows. Now on most cars, the window's normally held in by two screws at the base of the glass. Sometimes they're Phillip heads, sometimes they're bolts, and sometimes they're even riveted in place. On the Volvo here, it's got uh, clips. And uh, you simply just take your pliers and pop them off of there. It's a little bit harder to get to the ones inside. Okay, now the window should just push out of there. You can't go straight up with it, you gotta put it at an angle and pull it out. Now some people just leave the mechanism in place uh, and continue on with their build uh, and there's no harm in that but I like to take it out. This one has bolts and it's real easy to remove. Um, in a lot of cars they're riveted in place and uh, you'll have to grind off the rivets or drill them out. I think the best way is to just get the torch and, and they just melt out of there. You don't even have to do any cutting or anything. Just heat them up and they'll melt away and everything falls out and you're done. I'm not even going to waste your time on removing that. I'm just going to do it off the camera. It's really a piece of cake and there's really nothing to it. You just remove all the fasteners and it's, it'll come right out. Now real quick before I get out of here I want to show you one last technique. Now I normally don't approve of this type of technique because I don't like a messy garage and I don't like the extra work. But Adam, Adam Galea uh, told me of a trick and I want to give it a shot. I've never tried it before and I hear it works. Now what he says to do is take a spark plug, smash it in a little bit so you can take a little tiny piece of the porcelain and that you can just toss it at the glass and it'll shatter it. Sounds like a pretty cool trick if it works, uh, but really I think the best way to do it is to just take it out without breaking it and save yourself the hassle of getting out the shop vac and cleaning up all the glass and maybe even cutting yourself up a little bit. So first things first, gotta get the safety glasses on 
because I don't know how this is going to go down. Yeah, I've got I've got a few pieces here of the spark plug. All right, so I'll give it a shot with this one. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. I guess it really works. Sorry for doubting you, Adam. So now I got a mess I got to clean up, so I'm going to go do that. And uh, thanks for tuning in. And until next time.